if there was a hostage crisis, and you've seen it, um, you've seen a crisis with ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Abu Sayyaf, all these different groups. Um, if you're older, you probably remember the Iran crisis. When there's a hostage situation at that magnitude, it stops everyone, including those in high places, the United Nations, and they, they're sending Delta Forces, special op teams, because they must get someone or individuals rescued. So this week, as I was preparing, the thought came to my mind, how many of you, if you had been alive for 50 years and you remember someone had been a hostage in 1969 and you still get a a Twitter feed saying, by the way, there's still hostages in 2019. That's about what, 50 years or 20, or 30 years, how many of you would go about your business? And better yet, if it's your father, your mother, your sister, your neighbor, your cousin, your daughter, your son, how many of you would continue going through life just as nothing's really happening if the hostage situation had taken that long? Any of you would do that? And the Lord brought to my mind this example because we have a hostage crisis because Satan has held many hostages. So when I was preparing, the Holy Spirit was impressing me. There are people who are hostages to addictions. There are people who are hostages to pornography. There are people who are hostages to whatever sin may have caused you to be bound, blinded, And God was laying on my heart as I walked in this place, as I was there, um, and and it was a wonderful spread for dinner, and the thought just kept coming to my mind. I was just praying as the Holy Spirit, pray for the hostages to be delivered. You know, think about it. You're walking around and you're seeing people, and so you have to live in the spiritual realm because the Bible tells us that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So That is the only way you have to only operate that way 24-7. You're going on a plane. You're praying for God's protection. I'm thinking of verses like this where Jesus says, no man, no woman can enter into a strong man's house. He's talking about a hostage situation. And take the hostages unless the strongest one bind the hostage taker. And it is Jesus Christ. So you go into every scenario with that in mind. And you will radically see miraculous things happen in your life when you do that. As I'm walking around in my house and my children are asleep or my wife is asleep, I'm praying over my children. I'm praying the blood of Christ to cover. Before, as I, as I pull up in the garage, I'm praying that God would set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth, keep the doors of my lips, that I don't say anything to my wife that would be harsh. It is a spiritual mindset. And here's the other thing. So we're just setting the stage. Military intelligence. Did you know there are lots of military intelligence? Read the book, Great Controversy. You will clearly see it. And in the book, Great Controversy, this is what it tells us. It says, The scriptures declare that upon one occasion when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came among them. Not to bow before the eternal king, but to further his own malicious designs against the righteous. With the same object, he is in attendance when men assemble to worship God. Spiritual warfare, hostage situation. Listen to what it says. Though hidden from sight, he is working with all diligence to control the minds of the worshipers. Like a skillful general, he lays his plans beforehand. He already knew this date. As he sees the messenger of God searching the scriptures, he takes note on the subject to be presented to the people. Then he employs all his cunning shrewdness so to control circumstances that the message may not reach those whom he's deceiving on that very point. Great Controversy 518, 519. We're in a warfare. I remember it was in 2001, on a Friday, I was walking home while I was in Asia as a missionary. I was in the military. I served in the U.S. Army. And so a lot of concepts I I see clearly 
because of that background. But it will be very easy to see this point. You see on, on the picture there, their aircrafts, do they look different? They all have a different purpose. You have one, the AWACS, all the way on the top left. You know, that's where it's eyes in the skies. They have radars and all kinds of things. You have radar jammers. All their task is, is to interrupt electronic warfare jammers, is what they call them. Then you have fighter pilots, fighter jets that protect the payload on a bomber because the bomber can't defend itself. I'm making a point to say this. While you're seated, you are going to be different military as far as spiritual military personnel. While Pastor Mark was speaking, I'm praying that God would guide his thoughts the whole time. I'm praying for the Spirit of God to interrupt anyone whose minds may be drifting or taken away by some distraction. I'm praying for the power of God to escort and bind demonic powers. I am praying because here's another thing they do in the military. They have what they call encryption. It's in any kind of electronics. You encrypt so when you send a message, even with your credit card, it is encrypted so the numbers that I put in, someone else can't see those. So I could pray that God would encrypt everything I say and evil forces will not be able to detect you have to pray the way God desires. And that is why the Bible tells us in Ephesians, praying always, you notice it says the operative is always, with all prayer and supplication, how? In the Spirit and watching thereunto with all prayers for all saints. Amen? So that's just setting the stage. I'm getting, I don't know if I'm touching or something, um, connection, uh, but... I could hold a, lip, uh, a handheld if that's going to reduce. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. And so we'll just switch to this right here. And turn me off. Okay, there we are. Dear friends, I believe God has something great for us. Um, and I am so delighted, so thankful, so honored that God could choose for us to be here. It is a privilege. I believe we're living on the cusp of something great. The outpouring of God's Holy Spirit upon us. I, I am so delighted. Yesterday, my wife and I had a little time. Um, we had like an hour and a half date together. It was a blessing. Um, a friend watched our little children. And I said to my wife, I, says, I said, Hun, I really believe God wants us to give everything up that is not like God. Surrender everything in our lives. Give it up. Turn away from it. And seek God with all our heart. Thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. Let us pray together again. Father in heaven, what a blessing, Lord. What a blessing to know that you have all power that has been given to our Savior in heaven and on earth. What a blessing to know you are God who answers prayers. What a blessing, Lord, that you have not dealt with us after our sins, nor have you rewarded us according to our iniquities. What an amazing blessing that as high as the heaven is above the earth, so great are your mercies towards them that fear you. Tonight, Lord, speak to our hearts. This is only clearly understood if heaven gives the blessing of your Holy Spirit. So we pray that you would speak to us in the language we best understand. That the Spirit of God would revive our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is an amazing theme. Did you realize this? I believe it is God sent. And... God is really doing great things. And so every time you drink, you could always remember Psalm 63, verse 1, right? It's right there on, on, on that little um, water holder there. And the question I want to ask you is this. Are you thirsty? 
Have you ever ran in a race? Anyone run, run a, a 5K, maybe a marathon or half a marathon? Um, or you've been out in the desert or been out in the heat and you get thirsty. What is amazing is the Bible uses language in things that we are very familiar with. Water, food. The Bible uses water because we're very familiar with it every single day of our lives. If you're tired from working outdoors or whatever your employment, construction, or even working as a nurse in the hospital and you're walking around for many hours on your feet or you're working wherever it may be, when you get home and maybe you're saying, I will retire, but then you take a shower, what happens to you? It rejuvenates you. So water externally rejuvenates. How about when you're thirsty? It does the same internally. I wonder what water, Jesus, the living water, does internally to our souls. And so the question is thirsty. Here's a picture that I want you to pay close attention to because the picture on the left will go closely with something you will see in that passage. Let's read it together from that translation right there. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. He's looked for God where? In the sanctuary. And by the way, if you have your, your handout, you could look along and follow closely and write in this. Um, I believe Pastor Mark set the stage already. You all have prayed. Can you imagine going to the YMCA to learn to swim and you never get in the pool? That wouldn't be good. Can you imagine just longing to get your driver's license and then you sign up for a thousand, two thousand dollars and they only do the booklet and you never get behind the wheel. So what do you think a prayer conference should be? Pray. You should get in the pool. You should get behind the wheel. And so we're going to be doing that. And so this is setting the stage. Setting the stage. I want you, and I'm giving you seven minutes. Seven minutes. I'll be a stickler with the time. I want you to grab a partner right next to you prayerfully. Because the Bible says the scriptures are God what? Breathe, right? They're written by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so you read in Psalm 119 a number of times. Just do a study on how many times does it say in Psalm 119 alone. Revive me according to your word. So grab a partner. You're not going to go dialoguing about your trip and all of this stuff. What you're going to do is you're going to pray and ask God to revive you according to his word. You're going to read those verses right there on the screen. It's in your packet. And you're going to discuss prayerfully seven minutes beginning now. Go ahead. Grab a partner. Discuss prayerfully. Ask God to speak to you through these words. We want God to speak, not man. And so this is the key. Father in heaven, we know your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Our desire, Lord, is to be refreshed. Our desire is to be rejuvenated. Our desire is to be revived. And so we pray for your spirit to be poured out upon us. Give us a hungering this evening for your spirit, for your, your power to lead our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Just quickly. Um, just raise your hand if you want to share a phrase, a word, or something that maybe spoke to your heart. Just quickly. Yes, sir. God wants to be our God and we want to be his. Amen. Wonderful. Anyone else? Yes, yes ma'am. A lot. And I realized that I need the Holy Spirit to fill me up, not every hour, but moment by moment. Hallelujah. So you need to be filled. Okay. 
Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think it's amazing that his sanctuary, um, when I pray, he's already interceding for me in the sanctuary, so I am with him in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Take a couple more. All the way in the back. Okay. Noah, do we have another roving mic? Okay, thank you, sir. Back here. Well, this was my husband's thought. He brought out how Jesus was speaking to this from the Beatitudes. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Amen. for they shall be filled. All right, wonderful. And it's coming up. We're going to be having it. Over there? Okay. We'll the, fr the phrase which caught my attention is this, early will seek you. That's the first thing we need to do, to seek the Lord, first thing in a day. Amen, amen. Early will I seek. Yes. I find trusting God is so important in everything that you do in your life. Because when trials and tribulation come your way, you know who you can give it to. Amen. And he takes care of everything. Amen. I was in an accident just recently, and I wondered whether or not I could make this conference myself. But thank God, he put his arms around me, and I am here. Hallelujah. So, thank Amen. God for his glory. Yes. Amen. One more. We'll take one more. This is wonderful. We'll take two. This, this, this lady had her hand up before I went. Thank you. Having just lost my husband recently... The flesh part touched my heart because I miss his flesh next mm -hmm. to mine. And I can't imagine what it would be like to feel Jesus' flesh. Mm. I long to feel him. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Excuse me. And the, what, the part that caught my attention, it says, so I look for him in the sanctuary. Hmm. And Psalm 77 and verse 13 say, Thy way, O Lord, is in, is in the sanctuary. So if we want to find Jesus, we must find our way into his sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, this is a very important verse. I think God has been doing an amazing thing. Father, we know your word is quick and powerful, as we said. And we pray that you would guide us to see Jesus. We thank you that Jesus promised the Comforter, and he said the Holy Spirit will testify of Christ. So may we see a clearer picture of Jesus, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, it says, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Someone says, early. My flesh longs for you. And here are some key words. In a what? A dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. I have a picture coming up on the screen. This is an oasis in Abari. It's, in the, it's called the Sand Sea. And it's in the Sahara Desert in Libya. What do you notice in this picture? There is water. And what do you see surrounding the water? Vegetation. And what do you see outlining a little ways away from the, the vegetation? Desolation. I like that. Vegetation and desolation. So where is life? What would you say the life would be seen where? Around the water. Around the water. Around, what would you say? In the water, right? So where do you think God desires for us to have our spiritual growth? In the water. To be baptized by the Spirit. And so this is what we want to be praying for. And if you turn to page 3, we're going to be focusing on the cross. But before, this is an amazing quote. And today as I was praying, the Lord brought it back to my mind. I was not even thinking about it. And this quote came back to my mind. It says, prayer is a golden river at whose brink or banks some die of thirst... While others do what? Kneel and drink. Are you kneeling and drinking? And so this is the key. Someone mentioned about early. God is desiring. Because in the book of Mark chapter 1. In verse 35. You see Jesus. The Bible says he rose a great while before what? Before day. And he went into a solitary place. And what did he do? 
He prayed. He prayed. Do you think he was busy? He prayed. Because that is how he accomplished his task. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 50 that Jesus, a messianic prophecy pointing to Jesus, said he would be wakened morning by morning. He would be given the tongue of the learned to know how to speak a word in season. And he would be given the ear of the learned. I want to challenge you. In this day and age where there's so many distractions... And I would dare say they are depleting our oasis resources. They're making our lives like a desert. They're making our marriages a desert place. They're making our relationship with our children just like a desert. I would say to you, ask God to awaken you every single day. So that you can spend quality time with the living water, Jesus. Do that on a daily basis. Don't wait for Sabbath. Don't wait for Saturday. Don't wait for whatever day of the week you may be doing this. As we're going in this final section, I remember it was a few years ago. I was at a college in Florida and I was studying some science classes, and I was doing microbiology. I remember the very day Dr. Akumbawa, he took us down by this beautiful lake there in sunny Florida, in Miami. And as we went down by the lake, we had our little dropper specimen bottle, and we walked to the water's edge. But I remember I was just enthralled with the scene of the lake hearing the birds, just looking at the lily pads, watching the various waterfowls, just having a fun time, and almost as if they were laughing. And just seeing the ducks wade in the water, I was just really amazed at that scene. And then Dr. Okambawa, he said to us, you know, get a few drops. And so we put our hand down, and we pulled up a few drops, and we put it in the bottle, and we went up with an electron microscope, and it was amazing to see the life source that came up after we did all of these things. We were amazed to see the detail. Remember, I was looking and just seeing this gross detail of the birds and the lily pads. It was beautiful, but to see now these amazing details of things that were unseen. And it was with this premise, a few years ago, I was in California one morning. And I was having my devotion. You have the quote there on page three. And I'll read it to you. This is from the contemporary version, the book Messiah. It's found also on page 83 in Desire of Ages. And so I want to read this to frame it to look at Jesus, the living water. And see if you could take this very principle that we're given. It will revive your heart. It will draw you closer to Jesus. Father, we know your word is a lamp onto our feet and a light onto our path. We believe that Jesus is the word made flesh. May Christ dwell in our hearts by faith. That we being rooted and grounded will be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of God which passes understanding. Lord, this is our plea tonight. Fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm reading the contemporary version of the Tsar of Ages. It's on page three, below where it says the cross. But before that, what does it say, the words of Jesus? This is in the book of John. John was writing this, and Jesus said these words, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will do what? Draw all people to myself. And so the quote by um, Thomas, um, Jerry Thomas, it says, it would be good for us to spend an hour, how often? Every day, thinking about the life of who? Jesus. We should use our imagination to put ourselves in each story, especially the stories from the what? The last 
week of his life. The more we think about his great sacrifice for us, the more confidence we'll have in him and the more love we will feel. The more we study and think and talk about Jesus, the more like him we will become. Amen? And so this is our desire today is to look at this. And I remember on that particular day, I was looking and you take it, remember, Jesus is the living water and there are large bodies of water because Jesus is found in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Amen? But you could take a few drops from here in this passage in the gospel, but here we're told, especially the closing scenes, especially the final week. And you just prayerfully ask God, Lord, this is what I pray. I says, Lord, there are angels. And John even tells us there were so many things that Jesus did. If all the things that he did were written, not even the world could contain those books. But they're recorded in heaven. It's all recorded. And you can go to God every day and says, Lord, I'm thirsty. I want to know more about Jesus. And you could take a few drops from the book of Mark and you could just say, Lord, I pray that the electron microscope of the Holy Spirit will illuminate. Because he already says it in John 15. The Holy Spirit will testify of himself, of Jesus. And so I remember this particular morning. And you could go any place in the Bible, but this particular morning... I was there in the book of Matthew. Go with me to Matthew chapter 27. And it's good to compare the Gospels. You know, look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And John has about 90% of things that are not written in the rest of the Gospels. So you could look at various things and just prayerfully do it. You could have a devotional book. You could have a notebook. You could journal. You could have a prayer partner, whatever it is. And so as I was looking at this, the thought that came to my mind as I began to read, and I'm not reading a lot. I'm just taking a few drops. And you could spend an entire month on four verses. And it will be amazing as you write it down. It will richly bless your soul. Verse 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour, from noon, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, from noon till three o'clock. So remember, we're told to let our imagination grasp each scene. If you read in the book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page one, in talking about, and it's the principle, in talking about when the disciples were there with Jesus on the mountain, when they were hearing the Beatitudes, this is what we're given that goes along with this. Sit with the disciples. Enter into their thoughts and feelings. You follow? You're now placing yourself there. You're not just reading it as a good story. You're praying, Lord, I want to see Jesus. I want to know Jesus so desperately. I want to know him. I'm hungering and thirsting for him. And you do this. And let your imagination grasp each scene. In the Desire of Ages, it says we should take it point by point. So you're not rushing and reading really fast. You're taking a few verses, a few drops from the living water, and you're asking, you're prayerfully asking God, so you can't be in a rush, and you have to do this. And so as I was reading this, it says there in verse 46, in about the ninth hour, which is three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you what? He's saying the very words that's written there in Psalm 22. As I was reading these verses and praying, Lord, those angels that were there with Jesus, send them into my presence. Do you know what Hebrew says? Are they not ministering spirits? Who will minister unto those who will inherit the kingdom of heaven? Dear friends, we have resources all around us. We hear the phrase and we say prayer is the what? Is the key in the hand of faith to do what? So if we believe it, then we must believe God will send all resources that we can realize who he is more clearly. Pray earnestly. And as I was praying... I started to think, and a parable came to my mind. And the parable went like this. Jesus, 
he is on this ship. Picture a ship. It's a small vessel. There are angry waves and he is about to plunge into the abyss. There's lightning, there's thunderclap, there's flashes, it's dark. Because at, from 12 noon till 3, it's dark. And this parable comes to my mind, and Jesus is reeling back and forth, and he is calling, he is making a call, a mayday, a SOS call, and the father hangs up. He redials and he's on speed dial and he's pleading, pleading, pleading. He must die. There is no rescue boat going for Jesus. He must plunge into the abyss. And I see Jesus and he's there and the parable continues. And finally he gave up the ghost. He died. And I'm praying, I'm Lord. Another parable comes to my mind. Clear picture. And the parable goes like this. I do not know the cause of his death. I am simply there at the scene. I'm entering into the thoughts and feelings. And I'm there at the scene waiting and watching. I see people are wailing and crying. And then there are others who are just jubilant because this man had died. There are two crowds. I am confused. I am there and in the parable. I'm a forensic scientist. I have my coat, it's business as usual, and I'm there because I have been given a task. What is the cause of death for this man? I'm looking and I'm eavesdropping and I'm hearing and I'm hearing. And so his body is warm and I look at his hands and I know from a forensic and a medical standpoint, an impale object does not kill you. Unless it's in a vital organ or on an artery or something that causes a loss of a lot of fluids or blood. And so I look at his hand and I'm recalling as a forensic scientist in this parable about medical journal things that I've read that they have said when you have the ulnar nerve, when it's seared or it's, it's, it's cut into... I remember reading from medical journals when in World War II, when shrapnel would hit a soldier's ulnar or anywhere in that region, their nerve, not even morphine could deaden the pain. And so I am looking as a forensic scientist and I'm going, man, that must have been painful, but I am here to find out the cause of death. I look at his hands. Look at his feet, both feet. Man, finally, as I expose his side, I see this gaping hole, blood and water. This is an easy one to put down. And as I begin to write down some information, John interrupts me. And he says, wait. That's not how he died. And he gave me the story of how the soldier struck him in the side. But it was after he had given up the ghost. After he took his last breath. I only had a few drops under the microscope of the Holy Spirit. It was there in that room. I remember it. It was a Friday morning. I was there in California. When I was praying. And the Holy Spirit impressed me. Michael. You have the weapon. You killed Jesus. The nails didn't kill him. You heard from John, the sword was after he died. It, it was painful, yes. But your sins, Michael. 
Your sins crushed the very life out of him, Michael. I can remember just feeling utter sadness for what I've done. Dear friends, do you realize what it says in the Bible? The goodness of God does what? It leads to repentance. If you came and you saying, I am not thirsty for God, when you realize the goodness, read Psalm 103 when you have a time. Do it tonight if you please. Read through the passages in Jesus' final hours and days, and you will realize a God who loves humanity so much. Not willing that any should, should perish. And it caused me to fall on my face. And says, Lord, I am sorry for these awful things I've done. I repent of that evil thought I had in my mind. The sinless son of God was on a tree. And he died for you and I. Calvary, dear friends, I submit to you, I have not found anything else that would draw me closer to my Savior than to look at the final week of Jesus' life. All through Scripture, you could find Jesus. We're told in Desire of Ages, it will be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplation of the life of Christ. We should let our imagination grasp each scene. We should take it point by point, especially the closing scenes. We're told as we do this, and this is majoring in major things. As we do this, God will revive us. He will quicken us. I want us to spend a little bit more time praying. I want us to pray because you see you have a prayer focus. I believe the focus of our prayer should be again. As Pastor Mark mentioned earlier in his prayer. Where we had a little block of time. This will be personal now. If you had a car. And your car was on E. And you pulled up to a gas station. Your car was on E. You have a long journey ahead. How many of you, after pulling into a gas station, you have all the money and resources, leave with an empty tank? Any of you do that? You have your credit card. You have your cash. You have a, a whatever gas card. We don't go to the gas station empty and leave empty. When I was in Asia, when I was in Africa, and I remember going to the wells, you don't see someone walking for 10 or 18 miles to a well in the sun, and they go to the well with water, and they leave with an empty bucket. But we see the woman at the well did that, because she found the living water. And so we want to seek God, and I want you to think about, here's the frame of what we're thinking about. I want you to think about Psalm 139. And it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. In all seven churches in the book of Revelation, Jesus says, I know. He doesn't say, I know like this. He says, I know like this. I know. I know your struggles. I know, I know your heart. He doesn't go, I know. He is saying, I know, as the one who went on the Calvary's cross and saying, I know your struggles. I know your frailties. I know your addictions. I know your shortcomings. I know the things that are causing you to stray from me. I know. And he says, come on to me. All he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you a few moments. Just pray individually. Asking God to search you. And then praying for the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit says, it will convict us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Pray and ask God. Just plead with Him. Whatever it is. In silence. This is between you and God. 
and then we'll wrap it up. Just give you a few moments to seeking God earnestly. Let us pray. Father, you are an amazing God. We praise you for your faithfulness. Even when we're unfaithful, you remain faithful. We think of Jeremiah even while he was going through a hard time. He penned the words from a heart that was grateful and he said, This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. For they're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Father, we thank you and praise you that we have a Savior who is risen. We have a Savior who is at the right hand of the Father, praying for us to succeed, pleading the blood that was shed for every one of us. Lord, you know and you are the one who could search our hearts. We lie about our conditions so many times, Lord. We pretend about what is going on in our lives. But we plead today for you to anoint our eyes with eye salve that we might see. That we would get a clear glimpse of Jesus. That we would be revived. I thank you for each person here. We believe you have drawn us. And like Jesus said, if I and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all people unto himself. And John told us, this he said, signifying what death he should die. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving us through the precious lamb that takes away the sin of the world. We are grateful. May we live godly lives. May we live spirit-filled lives. I pray a special anointing upon every pastor here. I pray for every family. Lord, you know the brokenness in families today. Father, we pray the Spirit of God will deliver us from bondage. Because Jesus said, if the Son of Man has set you free, you're free indeed. Oh Lord, may Christ set us free. I pray for children, the young children. May you fortify their minds, use them. And may, even if someone is here and wondering why they're here, may they realize that there is a God who loves them with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, he draws each of us. Thank you, Lord. We're grateful. We're honored to be called your children. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a couple slides. Remember, prayer is a golden river at whose brink some die of thirst. There is water there, but there are people dying of thirst while others kneel and drink. And so keep remembering our theme. Pray earnestly. Pray with individuals. As you walk around this campus, pray. Plead with God. He wants to fill us. May God bless you this evening.